Classic Superstars Deep Dive rolls on. Today we go through Jack's Classic Superstars Series 9. Welcome everybody and Kyle here as usual. So here we are classic superstars series nine The sets keep getting bigger and bigger. We got nine guys in this set uh, Classic superstars started a little smaller and just kept getting bigger and bigger They went down a few times and back up and kind of all over the board uh, a lot of series be it GI Joe be it Star Wars Whatever, there's five guys in a line. There's six guys in a line. It's pretty consistent Classic superstars were not that way. Uh, this line jumped up to nine at this time, like I said previously. Very interesting. I don't know if the rhyme or the reason to that. I don't know if it was because they could uh, get guys signed and wanted to get them to market, or did a guy fall out in the, as the case in some of the later series. Um, just an interesting footnote in the history of Classic Superstars. But let's kick off Classic Superstars Series 9. Let's talk about it. Let's go one by one like we always do. And we're going to start with one of the heavy hitters of the line, in my opinion, Papa Shango. There's Papa Shango right there. I love the tattoo details. I love the accessories on this one. The necklace, the hat, uh, the great skull face paint. A very solid figure. Um, Series 9, a little, uh, not a lot of peg warmers, but some peg warmers. This was kind of a weird series that I don't remember any having any difficulty really finding any of them. Uh, they seem to be really selling at a good clip th at this point. Um, and everything was reasonably uh, accessible, I think, for everyone. Um, and just until, you know, then the next set came and this set stopped shipping. And that was kind of it. But I don't remember really much difficulty out there on Series 9. Uh, I think if you played the long game, you hit a couple of stars, you could get it uh, completed fairly easily. And that's just my memories of Series 9. Uh, results may vary, as they always do. Here's Papa Shango on the side. Like I said, just a great shot. Uh, a great figure. Uh, this is, you know, Papa Shango's second figure back from his uh, iconic Hasbro. This is a very iconic one to me, that is for sure. Mattel later released a, a Papa Shango for us all. Papa Shango on the side there. There's the top. I believe. Yep, I believe. So you can see in green... Uh, Classic Superstars Series 9. Series 9 is the set they started to number them. Great idea. It's one of those things. You, you don't do it at the first one because will there be a Series 2? Will there be a Series 3? Uh, that goes to saying the success of Series 8 brought on, hey, this line is to stay. And that's why Series 9 went on there. We talked about it in the Series 8 video. That was such a heavy hitter lineup. They created such demand for the Classic Superstars. And I think that is where Classic Superstars really broke loose. Uh, in my opinion, at least. There is the back. You got the glamour shot of Papa Shango. You got the whole lineup. We're going to get to every single one of those guys. Uh, let's read the back on Papa Shango. Debuted in 1989. 200 and, or 200, 320 pounds. Height 6 foot 6. Finishing moves. The shoulder breaker. Um, looking at his uh, prototype on the back here. I do not see any real changes. None at all. So there it is. But yeah, very, very cool figure, this Papa Shango. Uh, one of the must-haves of the line, in my opinion. I don't think this one sets back too crazy a price for uh, the value it is. And you guys know, you've watched enough of my videos over time. I love face-painted wrestlers. And Papa Shango's got an awesome face-paint job. So you know I have to have this one. That is for sure. So there you have it. There's Papa Shango. Let's move on to the next one. Well, I figured we'd do this one next because it's just fitting. We did Papa Shango. What came next? The Godfather. The same series. Very interesting move on Jack's part. They did not split the series out and put, you know, Godfather in Series 10 or Series 11. They just said, we're getting all those Godfather uh, Papa Shangos out in one series. Interesting take. I don't hate the idea. It gives you two of the gimmicks in the same one. Kind of strange. You think, hey, the next one would be Series 10. I don't know the reasoning. Like I said, I think this could have maybe been a contract thing. Hey, we got X amount of time to get this out before we lose into contract maybe. I don't know. Um, but uh, a very interesting thing and a very cool figure uh, for the time. And we're back in 2005. we got to put our time machine boots on. Uh, you got the nice robe, uh, basically a bathrobe, white bathrobe with cane. Hat, I believe. Yeah, hat. Of 
course. Um, underneath this, I don't have a loose one to show you, but uh, he's got like a, a brownish suit. It's basically the same color as the hat. Um, if you search this figure online and you see Lucy's, you don't see the coat a whole lot. You see him without the coat. Same figure. Glasses on this one, yep, he's got the big glasses. So a pretty cool uh, Godfather. You know, Godfather was a good character. Um, one that was a bit of a head scratcher. We've talked about this in the past. Are they really a classic superstar in 2005? Do you put him with the Hulk Hogan's, the King Kong Bundy's, Andre the Giants, Bret Hart's? I mean, the guys that are iconic. Uh, at the time, uh, no, it's kind of a head scratcher. This isn't really a classic superstar. But then, 15 years from now, where we're at now, this is a classic superstar. It works out perfectly. There's the picture on the side. The Godfather on the side there. Get the back of the package. And let's talk about it here. Debuted 1989. 320 pounds, 6 foot 6. Where have we heard that before? Oh yeah, Papa Shango. Almost makes me think they're the same guy. Couldn't be though. Finishing moves, the pimp drop, super kick, Ho train, the mafia kick, titles, WWE Intercontinental Champion, WWE Tag Team Champion, favorite quote, pimping ain't easy. No, it is not. Uh, it's not easy finding figures a lot, but the Godfather was fairly easy. I would say out of the, the group, him and Paul Bear were the ones I saw around the most. I don't know what the reasoning was for that. I could see Paul Bear being a manager, people maybe not interested. But the Godfather, I think, was probably my least favorite character in the set as far as all the heavy hitters in there. So I think that has something to do with why he maybe was uh, somewhat of a peg warmer back in the day. So... There it is. That's the Godfather. Let's see who we got coming up next. Well, speaking of peg warmers, I just segued into it, and this was no doubt the peg warmer of the set. Nothing inherently bad about Paul Bearer. It's just uh, if you're a kid, if uh, maybe even some collectors out there that don't want manager figures, they want wrestling figures. So Paul Bearer is maybe your last stop on the, hey, I have all these, I guess I'll pick up Paul Bearer now. Uh, I know when I was a kid uh, collecting LJNs, uh, I wanted the wrestlers. And then, okay, well, I have all the wrestlers here. I get to buy one toy. Well, Slick's coming home tonight. Or, hey, I'm going to pick up the old Freddie Blassie. Um, most time, manager figures are kind of a, a secondary get for uh, little kids. Not sure this line, though, really resonated with a lot of little kids. I think some kids picked them up. But this was more adult collector back at the time. Uh, but Paul Bearer, one note about Paul Bearer. There is a variant on this one. Um, I don't really talk about a lot of the variants because I just I'm not a big fan of them. Um, like you know Bob Orton having Ace on the side of his boots and not. Uh, it's just it's a little deeper than we're gonna go here. Um, but easily you can look up. There's a lot of those things and you can't really count those as different figures or, or else you'd have a million different figures in Jacks. There's a lot of variants, not just in the classic line, but all the lines. But one big one here is Paul Bearer. He comes with a tie and there's also a Paul Bearer with a bow tie version. Uh, running change, I guess. This is the tie version. This is an, always an interesting figure. Uh, they did this with Paul Heyman back in the Jacks lineup as well. They uh, have a, a regular t-shirt, I guess, soft goods material, oh, and then a plastic uh, suit jacket over it. Never a big fan of that. I don't like the big collar, uh, the tie. You can kind of see it. Like I said, they've done that with Paul Heyman figures as well. Uh, but a great scan, a great head on Paul Bearer. Uh, you know, he is a giant. That's one uh, thing Jax always gets beaten up about, that the managers always stand taller than the wrestlers. But I always say, back then, we didn't like it, but you didn't know it was possible to do any different until Mattel came and changed the game on that kind of stuff. But uh, you can, you know, display your guys behind. You You put him a little bit behind The Undertaker, and you can make it work. Uh, a little smoke and mirrors, I always say. Um, great head scan of this Paul Bearer, which you talked about. It's got his, like, crazy little look on it. Uh, you know, I remember Paul Bearer first, even before Paul Bearer, uh, watching the USWA as a kid on ESPN, um, him being Percy Pringle. I thought he was great as Percy Pringle. Then when he became Paul Bearer, I said, wait a minute, this is the weirdest thing ever. This is Percy Pringle. Why is his hair black? What's going on? So that's just a little Paul Bearer memories uh, to me. Paul Bearer since passed on, of course, as I think most of us know. Debuted in 1974. Career highlight, manager of The Undertaker, manager of Kane. Um, he did a few things more than that, but uh, those are probably what most people know him for. Uh, we also uh, have uh, the urn that came here. Very good. I'm glad they added the urn. A must-have. Uh, you get the Paul. There's his picture on the side. Look at that face scan. That is great. 
And then you got his name on the other side. And then, of course, the back. So that's Paul Bearer. Unfortunately, the peg warmer of the series, like I said. But uh, a must-have, I think, in the world of uh, classic superstars, that is for sure. Uh, we will talk another Paul Bearer down the load when we get to the uh, three packs. Um, and two packs, I believe. So much more to come. All right, here we got Bam Bam Bigelow. Now, one of my all-time favorite big men in wrestling. Uh, you know, I remember seeing him at the beginning of my watching wrestling career back in the WWF. He kind of journeyman through there. But where I really fell in love with Bam Bam was in WCW and then ECW uh, and then back to WCW. Uh, long conv uh, convoluted uh, story with Bam Bam. But his ECW time was amazing. I loved him in WCW time uh, at the end as well. Uh, you know, I, a little rant for me, I really want that iconic uh, ECW, the, the gray suit, the gray fireball suit. I would love it if Mattel could put that out. I don't think they have the rights to Bam Bam, I'm not so sure. But I would have loved to have seen that, and I have a feeling we would have probably got that in the Classic Superstars uh, down the line if the line would have continued, that's for sure. But uh, if you're only going to put one Bam Bam out, I understand why the Classic Superstars put him in the uh, traditional flame suit, I guess. The old school LJN, old school 80s flame suit. Uh, as that is what I think most people think of when they think Bam Bam Bigelow. But I do love this figure. It's a little small, but you don't want him in that Yokozuna body type. That just would not work at all. So I think they got, for what they have and what they use, they got the best uh, body style they could for Bam Bam. As usual, great facial, facial features. I don't have any complaints on this figure at all. Uh, just a really cool one. I remember just being blown away when I saw this one for the first time. Um... Bam Bam Bigelow, just being an all-time favorite big man of mine, of course. There is the back. Let's see here. Bam Bam Bigelow, debuted 1985, 327 pounds, 6 foot 3. Greetings from Asbury Park and the Kamikaze Headbunt, where his finishing moves, titles, ECW champion, that was his best run in my book, that's where I loved him the most, and WCW Tag Team Champion. Um, so there's Bam Bam Bigelow. Uh, the, t the tattoo work on his skull, I mean, I know people give Jax a hard time, we've talked about it before, but uh, some people would say, oh, I bet you they wouldn't even put the uh, skull tattoo on him, but they did, and they did a great job of it, they even got the tattoos on his arms, uh, no paint flaws from what I see here, I used to have a Lucy version of this, I don't anymore, I really, looking at this one, I'm holding it here, it makes me want to get a loose one again, maybe I'll work on that down the line. Uh, but very, very, very cool figure. I think this is another must-have uh, out of this great classic superstars line. Specifically, a must-have for Series 9. And we got another one coming up right now. All right, now we got one that there's, nobody's going to argue is a true classic superstar. And basically, this is a defining moment classic superstar. As this is Ric Flair in the robe. He won his first NWA title from Harley Race back in the day. Many uh, rentals by me as a young kid on VHS, running that Starcade, uh, best of NWA tapes, that kind of stuff, and watching this match over and over. Uh, I was a huge Ric Flair guy, big Ric Flair guy uh, to this day. Uh, you know, being a kid of my age, I guess, uh, Ric Flair's heyday, I was a big fan, as a lot of others were, I'm sure. So, uh, Ric Flair in the classic NWA blue robe. You know, it, this is one of those ones, not the iconic feathery robes, but this is this screams like early 80s robes before Flair took it to the next level. And I'm glad they represented this uh, Flair, that's for sure. A little picture on the side as usual. Got his name on the other side. And we got the back there. So the one issue uh, I had with this figure, and very strange, we look on the back, there's the prototype image. You can see Flair down there. Well, heck, you can see it on the side. There's the picture. Look at that scan of his face, Ric Flair. And look at his face there. Totally different. So there was either a running change or a mess up on the graphics department. They put the wrong head on, or maybe one's the right. We don't know. But uh, the picture on the side is not the same head as this. So somewhere in the line, somewhere along the line, Things got messed up and uh, changed. So I think of the two, I kind of prefer this head scan. I think it's a more serious one where he's got the like woo face that we're going to see over and over down the line. And we'll get to that in a future series. I would have loved to have seen that different head scan on this one. I think it would have fit better with uh, the robe and what this uh, depicts. But um, I don't know. Either way, I do like this figure. And this is one of the slam dunks of 
Series 9 for me. Ric Flair debuted 1972, 243 pounds, 6 foot 1, finishing move, the finger figure 4 leg lock. Titles, WWE Champion, WWE World Tag Team Champion, WCW Champion, WWE Intercontinental Champion, WWE Royal Rumble winner. Favorite quotes, woo! To be the man, you gotta beat the man. And I believe my daughter uh, says that from time to time. Um, but there it is. That is uh, Ric Flair. Very, very cool. Very cool figure. Um, a must-have, like I said before. Uh, especially knowing what this depicts. Comes with the title. You know, it's not the heavy uh, decoration titles we see nowadays. But a good one, nonetheless, I always thought. Uh, so there it is. That is Ric Flair. Series 9. Jack's Classic Superstars. Let's move on to the next one. Next up is a timely one, as actually Kamala just passed away this week. So uh, it's funny how that kind of works out, I guess, as he is in Classic Superstars Series 9. Uh, this is, I believe, the third Kamala figure we ever received. Uh, we got the LJN, of course, the Hasbro, and now the Classic Superstars. Um, a very good figure with some flaws, and we'll get into that. But I'll read the back on this one first. Mix it up. Kamala, the Ugandan Giant, 1974 debut. Weight 375 pounds, six foot seven. Finishing moves, the Ugandan splash. There's Kamala on the side. There's Kamala. Now, not bad when you look at it at first. Hey, we got a mask down here. We've never got that before. That is very cool to get that mask. Uh, big body. He kind of fits in the Bam Bam Bigelow headspace for me. I don't think you can use the Yokozuna body, so I guess they had to go with this body. So it is what it is. I'm okay with it. I don't hate it, but I wish there was kind of an intermediate fat guy uh, figure. Um, but it is what it is. The real pain point of this one is they gave him that uh, animal print skirt. They needed to make that a bit longer. Uh, it just, I don't know. It, it just does not look right. It looks funny. It looks like he's just wearing a skirt. Um, it almost harks back to the, uh, or harks to the naked Mark Henry figure is what it kind of reminds me of. Uh, they just, I don't know, it just kind of skimped out. Very disappointing. Um, there's the name on the side, of course. Now on the back, look at the back. You can see Kamala on the back. Look at the skirt there. Much longer. Something happened. Something fell apart in the uh, planning of this one because he was supposed to have a longer skirt on, uh, but it was very short. Um... Yeah, would have looked a lot better with the one on the back than what we got here. But uh, Kamala, definitely a classic figure. Uh, one that a kid like me was immediately drawn to. He was one of the first, I don't know about the first, but uh, an LJN I had to have. When I saw him, I grabbed him off the shelf so fast as a kid. You guys know I love face-painted wrestlers, and Kamala was a cool gimmick for its time, that is for sure. As kind of the Savage Beast Wild Man, uh, a great figure, the LJN one was. Uh, the Hasbro was all right. I had to get that as well. And then, of course, this classic superstar. So definitely some things that could have been improved on this. There was some miscommunication somewhere. Um, and we got what we got. And it is what it is at this point. There's no going back. There's no changing it. Uh, we later got a Kamala in the Mattel Elite set, uh, which, you know, blew this one away. But I always say we got to go back. You know, when this was released in 2005, it, it was what it was. It wasn't really the best then, and it hasn't really aged well with that skirt issue. But the mask, hey, give, give them uh, some credit for that mask, that's for sure. So there's Kamala. Let's move on to the next one. All right, next is a deep-cut, heavy-hitter favorite of mine, one of my all-time favorite big men. Uh, get, doesn't get a lot of love these days, it feels like, but that's Conrad Thompson. I mean Akeem, sorry. Akeem the African Dream. I love, love, loved Akeem back in the day. Uh, when my height of my wrestling fandom, when him and Big Boss Man were the Twin Towers, I loved Akeem. I don't know, something about him, but just as big as he was and how he moved, I just absolutely loved Akeem. I just thought he was just one of the best, especially back then. I really always took him fairly seriously, even though he was kind of a joke character. Um, we've talked about uh, the One Man Gang before. I absolutely love the One Man Gang. Uh, very severely underrated wrestler. Uh, I'm not sure why he's not in the Hall of Fame. If, if He definitely deserves to be in there, if you ask me, uh, for his different characters he played. But I always loved the Sakim. To me, though, it was missing the white kind of shirt over, or white, yellow. The yellow over shirt thing that he wore, they didn't have that. Um, 
I don't know why that didn't they didn't make that. I was kind of surprised at that, but uh, it's basically his wrestling gear, I guess. Uh, but there it is. It's another big figure using the Yokozuna body type. He's, I guess, he's closer to that than the Bam Bam Big O Klamala type. Uh, if he would have been in that, everybody would have said, "Well, he's too way too small, way too small." So I, I don't know what you could do with uh, Kamala, but or Kamala, <laughs> Akeem. Uh, so I, I just think that's the way they had to stick. They had to go with this body type instead of that smaller one, and I guess I applaud that. He did come with the soft goods hat. Um, you know, just his iconic gear, just missing his overcoat shirt deal. And there's Akeem on the back. You can see. Not too many changes from the prototype. I mean, you look at the face there. And you look at the head we got. The head we got seems to be a little bit bigger. Uh, just, I don't know. Just a hair, though. Not too much of a difference. Akeem debuted 1977. 398 pounds. He was one buffet away from being a 400-pounder. Six foot nine. Finishing move, the 747. The front suplex and the elbow. Hmm, there you go, the elbow. Uh, but like I said, I did like this figure. Uh, I think this was a severely underrated figure. Uh, we'll get to the Big Boss Man eventually. It, it doesn't really pair very well with the Big Boss Man. Uh, the Boss Man, they use the smaller body mold. I, I don't know. It, it's just, uh, it's interesting, these body molds. It's You don't know which way to go. But like I said, I think they used, for what they used and what they had, this was the right body mold for this one. So there you have it. That is Akeem, the African Dream. Uh, let's move on to the next one in Series 9. All right, now this is where things go off the rails with Jack's Class of Superstars Series 9. Did not know it at the time, but after all was said and done, the line was wrapped up. This is one of the biggest travesties uh, in the Class of Superstars lineup, and we'll talk about it over the next two figures here. Uh, one of these days, probably at the end, once we're through all these videos, I'll probably do a, a top 10 Class of Superstars, my top 10 favorite video. I'll also probably do the top 10 worst, top 10 figures I wish they would have made back then. Uh, there will be some of those videos. So we might have a month's worth of uh, what-if videos and what were my favorite videos. Um, probably dragging this series on uh, till March or April of 2021, if you're if you're following along week to week at this point. Um, Road Warrior Animal. You guys know I love face paint wrestlers. And at the top of my Mount Rushmore of face paint wrestlers, you got the Ultimate Warrior and you got the LOD, the Legion of Doom. I love the Road Warriors. I love Road Warrior Animal. So I was all in. I was happy to get this Road Warrior animal. Um, there it is right there, of course. A much, much later day Road Warrior animal. Uh, I got the silver spikes there. Um, kind of the uh, biker shorts and, and uh, the shoes. Very, very different than what we traditionally think of when we think LOD, that is for sure. Let's see him on the side there. Like I said, a much later version of LOD. Animal, Road Warrior Animal, debuted 1982, 285 pounds, 6 foot 2, finishing move, the Doomsday Device, titles, WWE Tag Team Champion, NWA Tag Team Champion, AWA Tag Team Champion, and his favorite quote, what a rush. Yeah, maybe, I don't know, <laughs> but uh, there it is, Road Warrior Animal, uh, they, they could have, I, I guess it's okay, so... As we're going through the line, this is okay. I don't hate this. Okay, it's a Road Warrior Animal. It's a, it's a later day. A little head scratcher, kind of like the Godfather. It is what it is. But, you know, we'll get the matching hawk. It'll it'll be okay. It's a classic superstar as well. Unfortunately, that did not happen. Uh, very, very weird. Very strange at the time. But it got really strange once the set was done. So we'll put Animal to the side right here. We got Road Warrior Hawk, of course in uh, this uh, set there he is right there now this is probably my favorite hawk figure of all time uh this represents that early 89 88 87 yeah probably 87 88 uh, road warriors this is my favorite incarnation where they were just bad dudes they just looked mean you got the dog collar on the, the the more basic paint on their face i guess you would say just totally awesome i love this hawk and I remember when these came out, I said, why don't Hawk and Animal match? Why would you release non-matching? And then I said, oh, I know what they're doing. They're going to put the opposite versions in the next set. Well, Series 10 came along, that wasn't the case. Well, Series 11, they'll put the opposite ones in that one. Never happened. And we got all the way through 28, and we never got matching pairs of these Road Warriors. One of the biggest travesties of the Classic Superstars line made zero sense for me. 
I've still to this day, I need to send Jeremy Padauer a Twitter message. I don't know if he would remember back or the reasoning or what happened there, but just a mess. It, nobody wants a tag team partner without the tag team partner. Uh, we've seen it late day Mattel. We, we got the retro fest, retro Shawn Michaels. Where's the retro fest Marty? Uh, then it made a bunch of people out there drive up the price of that Marty two pack that we got early in the Mattel line. People were taking that head, build another Marty. I, I don't know, but you got to have uniformity in your tag teams. You can't release one and not the other. Okay. You did it different in this set series 10. Do the opposite. Get people to come back to that next series. That makes a lot of sense to me. Or put them in the same series together, of course. But just a huge, huge travesty for me. I I love this uh, Road Warrior Hawk. I would have absolutely loved to have got an animal version of this. Probably, like I said, my favorite hawk in the line. Road Warrior Hawk, debut 1983. Height 6'3", 277 pounds. Finishing move, the Doomsday Device. Titles, WWE Tag Team Champion, NWA Tag Team Champion, AWA Tag Team Champion. Favorite quote, what a rush. Um... I don't know. It's just, it's just so disappointing. It gets me, it gets my blood boiling. I'm shaking in anger, as they say, uh, right now about this. I, I'm really hot about it. It just made me so mad, especially when the line ended. This is one of the first things I said when Jack's Class Superstars ended. I said, "What? What about the Hawking Animal? We didn't get it." Uh, it stuck with me all these years. And when I do the big top ten biggest disappointments, travesties of the line. You betcha you're going to be seeing this at the top of the list. Maybe not the top. I think there's one bigger one that's a bigger one that gets me mad. But uh, this is definitely going to be at the top, in the top five. That is for sure. I can tell you that right now. Um, so there's Hawk and Animal, Class Superstar Series 9. And now you're saying to yourself, well, that's it. That's the end of Class Superstar Series 9. We got kind of a bonus feature here. Um, so let's get to that right now. All right, we got a little bit of a bonus with Series 9. I don't know if you guys noticed this as I was going line by line or figure by figure earlier. But on the sides of the package here, you can see a little gold foil stamp. WrestleMania 22 ticket promotion. See back for details. I don't know if you guys caught that. There's also a, a big section down here, which we'll read. Uh, but if you guys didn't catch that, um, at, during this time, there was a giveaway. Well, let's just let's just read it. We'll go from there. So... Classic Superstars WrestleMania promotion information. Collect all 22 WrestleMania commemorative tickets distributed in specially marked Classic Superstars packages during the entirety of 2006. So uh, Series 9 came out right at the beginning of 2006, the end of 2005. Each ticket corresponds to one of the past 22 WrestleManias. Once you've collected all 22 tickets representing each WrestleMania, send all 22 tickets and corresponding 22 UPC codes from the packages located on the lower right side of the action figure packaging to the WrestleMania promotion address below. We will send you a never before released, exclusive to this promotion, limited edition classic superstars action figure. Please send tickets, UPC codes, name, address, phone number to WrestleMania promotion. Only send original tickets and UPC codes. Do not send partial submissions of less than 22 tickets, no photocopies, all that kind of legal stuff. Uh, and then it gets down to the details here. Classic Superstars 9, this series, will include WrestleMania 1 through 6 tickets. In store, 2, 2006. Classic Superstars 10 will include WrestleMania 7 through 12 tickets. In store, 5, 2006. Classic Superstars 11 will include WrestleMania 13 through 17 tickets. In stores, 8, 2006. And then Classic Superstars 12 will include WrestleMania 18 through 22 tickets. In store, 11, 2006. Tickets and UPC codes must be received by the Clearinghouse by 3-15-2007. So basically a year and a couple of months you had to get this done in order to receive the limited edition figure. Uh, submissions after that date will not be honored, so I cannot collect and, uh, these tickets and cut these UPCs out and send them in now. Darn it, I was good thinking about it. Um, and then they say uh, basically the figure will be sent eight weeks after, so you're looking towards the end of the year. Uh, the, the figure, the limited edition classic superstars figure will be announced in June, 2006. So about the halfway point of the year, obviously. Uh, and it will include never before released paint and head sculpt. This is a limited time offer. So I don't know if you can see behind Papa Shango, there's a ticket back there. So all these figures had different tickets. Like we talked about down here, uh, an interesting concept. That is for sure. Uh, let me take you back into how the world worked uh, back in 2005 for uh, old Kyle here. Um, 24, 25 years old I was uh, we're during this thing. And I don't know about you guys, but 25-year-old Kyle didn't quite have the income of 40-year-old Kyle. 
That is for sure. Uh, I was saving every single pop can and, and doing everything I could, working multiple jobs at the time, just trying to make sense of the working world and trying to figure out uh, how I could move up the ladder of the working world. I was fresh out of college. I didn't have any money. Uh, I had just enough money barely to uh, complete my classic superstars and buy each line as they were coming out. Um, let alone, I did not have enough money out there uh, to buy a whole other set of all these figures, to get 22 extra figures to open up. And I was, I was at that time, a, a strictly mint-on-card collector. Um, I didn't have money to buy 22, and I didn't want 22 loose figures at the time. Um, and then at the time, we were only through Series 9 of Class of Superstars. We didn't know how long the series would go. I had no idea that I was going to be a completionist with this line at the time, that I needed every single one. There's just a lot of unanswered questions, but I very early said, well, that's a, that's something I'm not going to have. I'm definitely not going to have whatever this limited edition figure is. I just told myself it's just not in the cards for me. Um, so it's very difficult. And and now I knowing what I know in the industry I'm in right now, uh, you know, I, I don't sell action figures, but I sell stuff to retail for a major company and we do promotions and sweepstakes and stuff like that all the time. Knowing what I know now, and I probably knew some of this back then because I was just getting started in my career, obviously. Um, people do not like to collect and do things like this. So it's like scavenger hunt. Uh, you know, it sounds like a great idea on paper. It sounds like a golden ticket giveaway, but then take a big step back and say, wait a minute, we got how many lines of figures, uh, how many series do we have to collect? And I got to remember to cut the UPC. I got to remember to save the ticket. And then I got to uh, send them all in at the end. What happens if uh, Papa Shango had WrestleMania 12 ticket and I could never find a Papa Shango? Uh, I found all the other ones, but I could never find Papa Shango. Well, I can't get the figure. So I think what Jax did is I think they thought, hey, there's going to be 10,000 people that are going to subscribe to this, that are going to do this. And they severely overestimated the amount of uh, people that were going to be interested in the sweepstakes. Uh, it interests a lot of probably people like you and me, but it's not easy to track these all down. Get doubles, in my case, I would have had to done. Um, cut them all out, save them. I mean, think of your average kid out there. They're not doing that. They're opening the figure. They threw it away on the ride home. And then they say, oh, I needed that UPC. Well, that UPC is long gone. It's in the garbage in the dumpster. It's gone. So I don't think they had the turnout and the people uh, redeeming their tickets. I would love it in the comments. Any of you guys watching, did any of you collect every single one, UPC, send them in and get your uh, figure? I would love to know because unfortunately I did not. However... Here is the big uh, however of the of the story. Uh, after this set was uh, going on and after it was all over, all of a sudden our good friends at Ringside Collectibles, where I got a lot of my classic superstars back in the day, um, they all of a sudden had the promotion old figure up. Uh, obviously this was announced midway through, so we knew what the figure was. It wasn't a surprise, but it was a surprise that it went to the Ringside Collectibles website, that is for sure. So let's show the figure. It's the Hulk Hogan 2-in-1. Uh, we'll, we'll dive and we'll show this thing. But, uh, what I ended up doing is I bought this from ringside collectibles. I think it was like 50, $60 on ringside, uh, which is a great deal because you had to have 22 tickets. 22 tickets is like, you know, 250, $300 with tax and all that kind of stuff. It's a heavy, heavy price point. So to be able to get this for 60, $70, 50 bucks, whatever it was at the time via ringside, uh, I couldn't give them my money fast enough. I got the figure I wanted. I didn't have to play that whole game of the ticket sweepstakes and stuff. And I think this goes to show the fact that Jack's made way too many of these figures. They waited until the sweepstakes were over, and then they said, okay, we'll give them to ringside. They can sell them. We'll get out from underneath these. Um, so it was a win-win at the end. I think it was a great idea on paper that probably didn't have the results they were really looking for. Uh, I would love to hear Jeremy's thoughts on this ticket promotion. If, if I'm right, uh, this is just my uh, brain working saying this, but I think that's why Ringside ended up with a bunch of these. Uh, and this is a great figure. Like it said on the back when I read it, a new head sculpt, a uh, never-before figure. And, and this figure made sense. You know, we, There was a lot of speculation at the time. What figure will it be? Who will it be? Well, we know this is Series 9 where we just reviewed. Series 8 had the Hulk Hogan, the first appearance of Hulk Hogan. I think a lot of people said, hey, this will be a Hulk Hogan figure or something. Get some excitement going um, and get a Hulk, Hulk Hogan in the line. The nice thing about this, this isn't like the NWO Hogan. This isn't like a mainstay Hulk Hogan you have to have in your collection. It's kind of an ancillary Hulk Hogan, especially being a two-in-one figure. Uh, the machine figure, that is as ancillary as ancillary gets, but I love that they did that. Um, the Real American Hulk Hogan is very, very cool. Would go great with your Mr. T Elite, I'm sure. Loose. Um, so it's cool they did a two-on-one thing. I am so happy Jax did not do the 
Some figures had the machine outfit on. Some figures had the Hogan uh, American Made outfit back and forth. Because you really could have had two figures I would have had to buy at that point. But they didn't do that. It was two and one with the machine uh, outfit off to the side here. So very cool figure. Uh, not a must-have for everybody. But being Hulk Hogan, a lot, a lot of Hogans are must-haves for people. Um, so here's the side picture. There's both incarnations of Hogan you get here. There's Hulk Hogan on the side, Real American. And then you got the back. No other figure shown as it's not part of a series. Uh, cool pictures of uh, the giant machine on the bottom and Hogan up top. Uh, when we do get to the limited edition video of some of these uh, class superstars, I will do this one again a little more faster, I guess. But we'll put that in that video as well. I don't think anybody will be too offended by that. Real American Hulk Hogan debuted 78, 275 pounds, 6 foot 7, finishing move the leg drop. Titles and honors, WWE Champion, WCW Champion, WWE Tag Team Champion with Edge, WWE Hall of Fame inductee, favorite quote, what you gonna do, brother, when Hulkamania runs wild on you, of course. Um, so there it is. There is the ticket giveaway. It's got kind of a red, white, and blue stripe above it. It is not a part of a series. Uh, fits great with the set. Um, a really, really cool giveaway. I think uh, they could have done something maybe a little bit different. I love the theory of the ticket giveaway. It was cool to get those tickets. Uh, I still have a couple of those tickets floating around from some of the doubles I had. I remember using them as a bookmark. Um, but it is what it is. I, I don't know if a lot of people have this. This one kind of flies under the radar these days. I'm sure it goes for a pretty penny on eBay. I haven't looked in a long time. Uh, but there it is. The Real American Hulk Hogan. Uh, I thought we put it in at Series 9, the start of the WrestleMania ticket promotion. Do a little talk about it. Um, but there it is. Uh, hopefully you guys picked one of these up, or maybe you guys didn't even know this existed, and you'll have to start looking on eBay for it. Um, but hopefully you enjoyed Class Superstars Series 9 video. Uh, as we say, every Tuesday I'm putting out a new video until we're done. we got about a year's worth of videos left to do, it seems like. There's a lot to talk about these Class Superstars. So we'll be back with Class Superstars Series 10. Uh, please like the video. Don't forget to comment. I love to hear. Were you collecting the tickets? Did you send those tickets in? Do you have this Hogan? What were your overall thoughts on the line? How about that Road Warrior fiasco? Still haunts me in my dreams to this day. You guys leave me a comment and tell me what you think. And then uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I say it all the time. And I think everybody on YouTube says that. If you don't say it, what are you doing? It's like you have to say it. Subscribe to the channel. Wait, subscribe to the channel. You got to do it. Help your old buddy Kyle out. Uh, we're marching towards uh, 2,000 subscribers as of this video. We, we might even be past it by the time this airs. Who knows? But uh, don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, I'll see you guys all real, real soon.